Andre Chikatilo, the butcher of Rostov, one of the most infamous serial killers of all time. A man who feared the eyes of his victims, a genetic condition that resulted in the deaths of more victims, and behavior that could be considered some of the strangest to ever see a courtroom. All this and more on this episode. Let's open the serial killer file. Andre Chikatilo was brought into the world during great times of human degradation. Born on October 16, 1936 in a small Ukrainian village, Andre and his family faced the hardships of struggling to stay alive during the man-made famine known as Holodomor. It was estimated that approximately 2.4 to 7.5 million Ukrainians died as a result of Joseph Stalin's enforced agricultural collectivization. Farmers made zero wages and were forced to hand over their land and livestock to factory collective farms, leaving villagers with practically nothing. In fact, times of desperation were so brutal that his own mother traumatized Andre after telling them that prior to his birth, his older brother, Stepan, was kidnapped, murdered, and cannibalized by neighbors. Andre and his family lived in a small one-bedroom hut and had no choice but to survive off of leaves and grass on the ground. His father had adored him and his sister, however, his mother was a bitter woman and would frequently berate Andre on a daily basis. For years, Andre suffered with the embarrassment of being a bedwetter. Since he shared a small bedroom with his mother and sister, his mother would often beat him every time an accident occurred. It was World War II and Andre was living through German occupation in Soviet Russia. As a child, Andre was exposed to viewing corpses on the streets, women being raped, all while living a life of shame after his father, Roman, surrendered himself to the Germans and was held captive in concentration. Society saw his father's actions as weak and pitiful. A person who was a prisoner of war either lived or died serving their country with dignity, not giving up. Villagers saw Andre's family as cowards, resulting in their small hut being burned to the ground. In school, Andre was considered an incredibly intelligent student that was painfully shy around his peers. Students would constantly bully him, severely shattering any ounce of self-esteem he was ever able to muster. This caused Andre to become introverted and scared to talk to females he took an interest in. But Andre believed his intelligence made him superior to his peers. As an adolescent, Andre viewed sex as a shameful act, but was envious towards anyone who could have a successful sex life. For as long as Andre could remember, he failed to become sexually aroused unless inflicting severe physical harm on anyone he became intimate with. His first sexual encounter took place at the age of 15 when he attempted to rape an 11-year-old girl. After the child struggled to be released from his grasp, Andre became excited and accidentally ejaculated before he could rape his victim. Inadvertently, Andre had discovered that fear and violence excited him more than the act of sex itself. Andre graduated in 1954 and applied to the University of Moscow in hopes of studying law. He believed due to his intellect that he would succeed in this education, but failed to prove himself right after flunking his entry exams. Being certain that he would have made it into such a highly respected school, Andre truly believed that he had been rejected because of his father's ill reputation held by the public. With no other option, Andre became involved in the army, where he was able to get a first-hand experience with violence. Once completing his three-year KGB communications unit in Berlin, Andre joined the Communist Party and moved to Russia in 1961. It was a new start to life and Andre was no longer bothered by his past. Now working full-time in Russia as a communications engineer, all Andre needed was a chance at starting a family. In 1963, Andre married a young woman by the name of Theodosia. The marriage had appeared to be arranged by his sister, who knew that Andre had a difficult time communicating with women. Just two weeks after their introduction, the two were married. However, in no time, Theodosia learned of her husband's sexual dysfunctions, but was blind to his violent needs. Despite Andre's near inability for conventional sex, the 
two were able to conceive their first daughter, Ludmila, in 1965 and son Yuri in 1969. Wanting to provide more for his family, Andre completed a correspondence course in Russian literature at Rostov University. His degree would give him the opportunity to regain a feeling of control, leading students as a literature teacher. From the beginning of his career, no one could take him seriously, and Andre's self-esteem suffered further. Students saw Andre as a weak and unimpressive man that failed to control classroom behavior. Though he understood the subjects he was teaching, students would pick on him and disregard him as a man of authority. Taking advantage of his modest behavior, students would threaten to beat him, belittling his masculinity and dominance. Andre felt like a failure in everything he did, and he knew he was unable to seize discipline from children who saw him as nothing but a joke. In 1973, Andre sexually assaulted a 15-year-old student, grabbing her breasts and genitals. Though the school board was informed of this assault, nothing was done to reprimand him. Professors would often encounter Andre fondling himself around his students and was caught watching female students undressing in their dormitories. After many complaints against him, Andre was forced to resign his position or be fired. With his family unaware of his sexually deviant behaviors, Andre decided to resume his teaching elsewhere in the city, but was unlucky due to employee cutbacks. Andre took his teaching to the Russian city of Shakti, where he'd resume his sexual advances on young children. Andre was 42 years of age when he finally realized that killing was his only way to satisfy his sexual needs. On December 22, 1978, Andre lured nine-year-old Yelena Zakhodnova to an old shack he secretly purchased in order to rape women and children. Unable to have an erection, Andre failed to rape the little girl and began stabbing her with a knife. Yelena was forced onto the ground and was viciously stabbed multiple times in the stomach. The excitement of the blood pouring freely onto the floor and spraying onto his body caused Andre to ejaculate on the child. After he heard her attempt to talk, Andre strangled her until she was unconscious and tossed her body into a nearby river. Officers found the child's body two days after the murder and questioned Andre due to the strong amount of evidence against him. Blood from the child was found in the snow and trailed right towards his property. However, Andre denied knowing the child. Police didn't hesitate to make an arrest and apprehended 25-year-old Alexander Kravchenko, a nearby neighbor who had murder and rape charges previously laid against him. Alexander was wrongfully convicted of the murder and was executed for it. With luck on his side, Andre felt he was untouchable and was able to slip free from his first kill. By 1981, Andre had quit his job as a teacher and moved on to be a supply clerk in a local industrial complex. Andre was selfish and desired to fulfill his urges. On September 3rd, 1981, Andre waited by a local bus station where he came across a 17-year-old girl named Larissa. In order to gain her trust, Andre promised her vodka if she'd walk with him to the closest forest. A rebellious teenager without care, Larissa followed Andre to a secluded area of the forest where the two attempted to engage in sexual intercourse. Unable to achieve an erection as usual, Andre became violent, beating and pinning her to the ground, placing copious amounts of dirt into her mouth in an attempt to stop her from screaming. Without a weapon in his possession, Andre strangled the victim with his bare hands and brutally mutilated her body by tearing through her with his teeth. It was noticeable at her crime scene that Andre ripped off one of her nipples and left the body in the exact location with dirt and leaves covering what remained of her. A third victim fell into Andre's trap on June 12, 1982, when he traveled to the municipal district of Rostov. Nearby the bus station, Andre Andre encountered a 13-year-old girl who was walking alone back home from an afternoon shopping trip. Following his victim down a narrow path, Andre pounced on her, dragged her into a secluded ditch, tore off her clothes, and slashed her 22 times to the head, neck, chest, and genitals. It was a popular superstition at the time that a murder victim's last moments were imprinted on their eyes, and because of this, Andre cut into her eyes and mutilated her eye sockets. And like so many others, Andre's urges became worse and worse, as did his behavior. Andre was able to persuade people of many ages with his warm trust. From young children to older females, prostitutes, and runaways, Andre was on a killing spree. It became relevant to Rostov investigators that multiple bodies were being located in forests and alongside rivers with similar killing patterns. Many of the bodies were mutilated beyond recognition. Victims were found with exposed eye sockets, intestines, disemboweled, genitals mutilated. In fact, the murders were so incredibly 
utterly messy and utterly morbid that investigators believe the crimes were being committed by a person of special needs. A Moscow police team was soon dispatched. By 1984, locals were able to give a description of the potential killer. The manhunt for Andre had resulted in law enforcement solving over 1,000 unrelated crimes, including 245 rapes and 95 murders. On September 13, 1984, Andre was apprehended by an undercover police officer at a Rostov bus station after he was spotted luring a young child. Inside of his briefcase, he was carrying a large knife. Investigators were able to take semen samples at his victim's crime scenes, and they believe that this gave them a break in their case after learning that their killer was blood type AB. But when taking Andre's blood, lab reports indicated that Andre was blood type A. What investigators failed to discover was that Andre lived with an incredibly rare genetic condition in which the only way to get an accurate blood test from Andre would be to test his blood itself, not his semen or anything else. Otherwise, the results would not match. With insufficient evidence against Andre, investigators had no other option but to release Andre from custody the following day. Though Andre got away with his murders, he was sentenced to a full year of jail time for stealing offenses. This caused him to be expelled from the Communist Party. Instead of a one-year sentence, Andre was freed after three months in prison. After his release, Andre found a new job in a locomotive factory where he kept a low profile until mid-1985. As time went on, Andre just got better and better at killing. Andre continued his pursuit and was unknowingly under surveillance by Moscow investigators. In November of 1990, Andre mutilated 22-year-old Svetlana Korostik in a wooded area nearby a transit station. Just as he left the scene, an undercover detective watched Andre as he washed himself off by a well. Just as Andre passed the detective, it was noted that he had dirt and grass stains on his jacket, as well as a red smear across his cheek. It would be nearly two weeks later when officers would unearth Svetlana's mutilated body. She would be the 36th known victim in the case. Andre was deemed suspicious by investigators, but without sufficient evidence to make a formal arrest, officers continued keeping a close eye on him. Andre was sure to keep an eye on the manhunt in local newspapers. He assumed that he was under the radar, making himself the perfect murderer. On November 20th, 1990, Andre was seen leaving his home with a large jar that he attempted to fill with beer at a small kiosk by his local park. Andre was planning on using the jar of beer to lure his next victim. However, this would all come to an end when a group of undercover investigators followed Andre, attempting to lure children, resulting in his arrest. This would be the second and final time that Andre would be taken into police custody. Andre believed he was far more intelligent than investigators and proclaimed his innocence. Officers were also able to discover a knife and rope in Andre's possession during his arrest. For 10 days, Andre was placed inside a cell in KGB headquarters. Detectives told Andre that he was a sick man and if he confessed to the murders, he would not be prosecuted by reason of insanity. After days of denying his involvement in the murders, Andre eventually confessed to 34 of the 36 murders on November 30th, 1990. He was able to give a full confession of each murder, showing investigators the crime scenes and explaining ways he would murder his victims. He would later go on to confess to an additional 22 killings. Andre was charged with the murder of 53 women and children during his time killing, and he was held for psychiatric evaluation. The following year, on August 20th, 1991, Andre was transferred to the Serbsky Institute in Moscow to undergo a 60-day psychiatric evaluation to determine whether he was mentally competent to stand trial. Further evaluation indicated that Andre suffered from borderline personality disorder with sadistic features. Despite this, Andre was deemed legally sane and competent to stand trial. On April 14, 1992, Andre stood trial in front of hundreds of mourning family members. Many were able to describe the madness as a circus rather than a court appearance. For Andre's safety, investigators placed him inside of a steel bar cage while the public screamed, cried, and even fainted in his presence. Andre was charged with 52 counts of murder in addition to five charges against minors committed when he was a teacher. The trial became one of the first major media events of liberalized post-Soviet Russia. During the trial, Andre yelled and acted as an insane individual. He would laugh, interrupt the trial, sing, and expose himself to the court, stating, Look at this useless thing. What do you think I could do with that? 
Andre would formally address the courtroom in a two-hour statement informing the families that he had been a man robbed of his genitals. He claimed to be cursed with a lifetime of sexual frustration and did not originally wish to kill. On October 15, 1992, Andre Chikatilo was found guilty for the 52 murders and five counts of sexual assault. He was sentenced to death plus 86 years and the verdict enraged Andre and he kicked his bench and screamed. On the 14th of February, 1994, Andre was taken from his death row cell to a soundproof room and was executed with a single gunshot behind the right ear. Though it was discovered that Andre had killed between 52 and 56 people, it's often believed that that true number is much, much higher. And of course, don't forget to click subscribe on screen now or below this video to subscribe to my channel because you won't want to miss what's next. I upload new videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and I will see you next time.